When you made this record with Andrew Watt, you talked about how you felt this was the best music you'd made. Where did that feeling come from? You try to avoid saying things like that because it does, I, I think most groups and writers and musicians, they always feel like their last work was their best. And, um, but I, I really thought about that quite a bit yeah. before putting it out there in public. And, and I, I think it's, you know, you always go in with high expectations or you, 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 you leave enough space to see what will happen. Yeah. So you don't have, you know, you're not bringing in 12 songs or each person is not bringing mm -hmm. in five, six songs. You, you know, you, you come in and, and somebody, you know, in this case, we could just bring in a seed. Yeah. And then by the end of the day, everyone just, you know, it was like time-lapse photography, you know, you, by the end of the day, you've, you've got a real, you're, you're looking and tending to a, a healthy plant. Yeah. Um, part of that is because of how quick Andrew works. Um, but also because we've been doing this for 30 plus years and, and there is some unspoken communication and focus mm -hmm. and, um, and camaraderie that allow you, uh, allows you to, you know, kind of peak on, on short notice, you know, right. with a new song. Right. How do you typically write? Do you, do you just sort of collect things? Typewriter or No, I mean in the sense of... Do you just sort of collect thoughts, ideas as you go? Do you sit down in a place and go, I need to write a song? How does it typically, is there a, a discipline to it for you? You know, I think it's a sensitive thing and I've always been wary of, of talking about it because I, I, I feel like it's, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a fragile thing. And yeah. I think that you know, it's almost like when the time uh, when the time comes, you you just kind of put up an antenna, yeah, and it might not happen right away, or it might take five minutes, might take a half hour, might. But but I think just the the act of writing and and, mm -hmm. um, and which I'm kind of always doing. But then you really wait for some kind of signal to come, and and uh, a lot of times it does. Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about the percentage of success <laughs> because I don't want to jinx it, you know. And you don't want to be greedy either because yeah. you know other people need songs too. <laughs> um, so there, are you the, are you of those who believe you're, everybody's tapping into the same basic wavelength? <laughs> well, you know, um, you wouldn't want to, you know, keep going back to the, you know, you. I I think it's. I think it's a sensitive thing, and um, but then once it starts happening, once you start getting the signal, and then you kind of engage, and then you're like, okay, and then you've got something, and then and then you start being part of it. You know, you start, you know, now it's, you know, taking the images and taking the bits of inspiration, and then and then transmitting it or turning it into some kind of poetry or even activism, but um, but I also start, you know, I, I have notebooks and, and, and I'll have things that I can at least go back to and, and look for a seed and, and I could have like a long two page written, almost reads like a short story, but if I can just pull a line out of there or, um, mm -hmm. you know, it could be a, a title or a chorus and then, and then you can, you can go from there. So. Um, it's good to have scraps of inspiration uh, there yeah. for you to mine when needed. Yeah. Did you do that with this album? Yeah, pretty much everything I've ever written. It's always started off of yeah. paper napkin. Now cloth napkins because we're in nicer hotels. <laughs> <laughs> what is a band that's been together as long as you have? aspire to at this point? I, 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 it, it sounds probably cliche, it's probably what everybody says, but I, I honestly still feel like we have a, our best record in this. Yeah. You know? And you have to believe that, don't you? Yeah, and then also 
there's just those moments on stage where when it's all hitting, you feel like you're that band that you was your favorite band when you were a kid, you know, like where, you know, where it's mm -hmm. like, where you feel like, wow, I'm, I'm in the best band in the world right now. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and, and not as it from an egotistical standpoint, but like, I'm playing with all these guys right now. Like, yeah. wow, how did I get here? You know, like that, yeah. that kind of stuff. So, but I think it's the hope that there's just new, there's just new energy that we're going to tap into somewhere down the road. I think that's the amazing thing about playing music is that it's this thing that moves around and you got to capture it. And sometimes it really hits you hard and then sometimes it's elusive. And But um, just want you want more moments like that. And making mm -hmm. this last record, there were a lot of moments like that. Yeah. yeah. Mean, and there's still, there's still no bigger thrill than capturing it. It's, it's like, it's like, the most religious thing I've been around. And I've been around a, a lot of religion. <laughs> Ed, what about you? Yeah, I think it's the same. I, I think it's the, I think it's the, look, if, if you have, if you have something to say, then, um, and you're given an opportunity to express, then that'd be tough to walk away from. Yeah. But um, it's a huge, responsibility and, and you know it's just got to be good and you know we've we've made records in all kind of different ways but um it's really none of it matters except the results mm -hmm. and this one in particular the results i felt set a really high bar do you get nervous about playing new songs our first ten shows, for sure. No, oh, I'd say two, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, just from the standpoint, not only because you're obviously playing them for the first time, but just for the reception. I remember asking asking Elton about it once, and he was like, he was goes, yeah. He goes, he goes. I noticed that it's, people always get up and go to the bathroom on the new songs, and it really pisses me off. <laughs> well, it's hard to not, you know. You're, you're playing a new song, and it looks like my eyes are closed, but I'm actually seeing if anybody's going for the T-shirts or anything. But we've done great. These, these, these yeah. songs transmit, and you're getting to see yeah. some musicianship and, you know, Matt Cameron on drums and, and everybody, you know, the whole group after all these years. I mean, one thing we, you know, one, one positive thing about, you know, kind of surviving and keeping the group together is on an individual level, everybody's just become better at their their instrument or their craft. Or, yeah. So you've got, you know, you've got a, a higher level of mm -hmm. um, musicianship, and it's it's cool to see it on display with the the new material. Yeah. When you talk about it being sensitive or fragile, what do you mean? How is it fragile? Meaning that I, I, you know, I don't think there's any way to get really, like, good at it or great at it. Yeah. That there's always something that's that's there's some kind of something that's not, you know, mortal. There, there's something you're tapping into, or or there, there, it, it a, a a great one just doesn't come out without that little extra, some kind of. Uh, unexplainable beauty. That's why I'm having a hard time talking about it. Yeah. There's something that comes in that that you can't sit down and manifest on your own. Yeah. You, you need to be there and and have your your satellite, you know, on receive. Yeah. But um, is it one of those things? You're, is it? Are you afraid to talk about it because you're afraid it might go away? <laughs> but yeah, I might. I sh maybe shouldn't be talking about it. <laughs> There's somebody, oh, he's giving away the secret. I know. Well, but I mean, because everybody talks. I mean, I've heard. I've heard a lot of songwriters talk about how they're always worried that that's the last great song they'll ever write. Well, I don't have to. I'm still trying to write one. <laughs> great one. <laughs> I a think really great one. I think you've done okay. We want to be able to make records, and you know, we want to see what it's going to sound like on our. Our fourth record, our fifth record, or you know, the first yeah. record got a lot of attention. Well, 
I'm really we're we're already dreaming about wh where we could go in in five records or six and mm -hmm. and so all these years later to see where we've ended up and and to make a record that we're extremely proud of 30 years later 30 Two yeah. or something. Then well, I mean, I would start when you, you talked about how you thought about saying that you thought it was your best record. I was like, when you said that, I'm like, okay, I know he's not saying that lightly because that's something that you expect somebody to say, but no. it's not something that I would expect you to say without really thinking. Well, about I knew they were. I think that was right before they heard it. So I was like, well, <laughs> you can, you can tell me if I'm wrong in about 45 minutes. <laughs> Do you know when you got something good? Do we know when we have something good? I, you know, I, I think, I, I think there's something, there's always that, you know, you know, like this record, it felt like, and, and going on tour with mm -hmm. this record and these new songs and, and kind of keeping the, the, the blood fresh and healthy in the group and, and mm -hmm. for the audience as well. Yeah. And, and to ultimately want to play live in the, uh, on a current tour of a band that's been around for 30 years, you still, you know, if you can play seven, eight new songs mm. and have them transmit and be as good as any of the songs that folks have been listening to for 15, 20 years, yeah. um, you know, that, that's, um, it, it felt like this record, you know, if you put it like in a baseball analogy, is like this, this would, we had great players in order to have a, a great season. Yeah. You know, and, and even there was no, a, anybody, uh, it, any of the songs that were on the bench could still f play, you know, center field. It just felt like we put together like a, a, a yeah, a winning team of songs. Yeah, it's such an interesting process. I mean, because when you talk about putting up an antenna, it's always, as you say, it's being in a position to receive. And what I sometimes wonder is how. What is, how do you put yourself in that position, you know, to be open? Uh, it's usually just a typewriter and a mm -hmm. guitar or both. It's the a, showing up part. Just showing up. And, you know, I, I try to explain to young songwriters or people that are interested in it. You know, I think, you know, to this day, one of the most rewarding things about putting in the, you know, putting yourself in that position and, and when it happens, and usually I record on small eight-track digital machines, no computers and nothing too fancy or distracting. Yeah. Um, and even with something as simple as a small drum machine played with two fingers and a yeah. guitar and then overdub and then a background vocal and then yeah. the lyrics and then, you know, within a matter of hours, and time does go quick when you're doing this, um, something that didn't exist that morning yeah now exists mm -hmm. and you can share it with somebody or you know I, I'm sure there's songwriters out there who can relate to writing a song and then staying up for four hours just listening to it on repeat and maybe changing a little something but but really thrilled at the fact that they're listening to a piece of music that just didn't exist you know hours before there, there's there's something rewarding in that and and it's attainable on all levels you know it could be a very simple thing as long as you know there's truth and authenticity and mm -hmm. and um you know not everybody needs to understand it or right. but but if it if it hits you yeah and over the years your barometer your taste become a little more uh, refined and um, and you work a little harder to uh, meet your own elevated expectations and also the you know to meet the expectations of, of the group that you're going to present it to and yeah. hopefully record. Mm -hmm. What is that when you when you take a lyric 
to the group. And, you, and you've re usually written music with it too, right? You're not just presenting lyrics. Well, if I bring in a song, I bring in a song and right. it has a few things. And, yeah. and usually we we don't even discuss the the, the words or, you don't. or the meaning. It's more the chords and the aggression yeah. and uh, yeah. volume, momentum, uh, tempo. Yeah. But um, but a lot of it on the this last case because we were just all writing together and writing the music and yeah. you know someone I, it might even be my idea of I have these few chords and then we have this and yeah. then we kind of everybody learns them and has finds their own part and then then you arrange and then and then you you put these building blocks together so you can kind of let's say shape the perfect wave yeah you know that has a couple turns and then a barrel and then and then yeah. the lyrics come because then the lyrics come from surfing that wave and and making these transitions you know and, and yeah. taking a chorus going into a bridge or something like that you know yeah, i'd never thought of a song as a, as building a wave but you're a surfer so that it's it's really it's yeah you don't want to yeah it's not like there's a process, but but that's a go-to. It's all about transitions, because it's it's um, you know the transition of a wave <laughs> for all the non-surfers. But but you're you're keeping an energy up and and transitioning, and and songs have transitions. You know they go from verses to choruses and pre-choruses and mm -hmm. bridges and yeah. And I think it's when the vocal or a guitar melody, if if it can, if it can make those transitions and and have them be musical, yeah. then then that's what makes a song into music. Yeah. You know, but songs can be songs. Songs can be you know blocks of lyrics, and I I think that's yeah. how it was for me early on, just kind of putting things in and hope. Hopefully not forcing them, and Johnny Ramone, we 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 got very very close, and and he would kind of tutor me on on melody and songs and Everly Brothers and I mean all uh, mostly fifty stuff and yeah. and really clue into melody. You know this is this is you know one of the angriest punk rockers yeah. <laughs> ever lived and a conservative all these things, but. Um, it was really interesting, and between that and picking up a ukulele, which had somehow less strings, yeah. but more melody, yeah. those two things at the same time kind of helped me evolve into a thing where I was writing music and not just songs. Interesting. It's you, the goal, anyway. Right. The origin story when you first connected and um, you first got the tape and you wrote some songs and sent it to them. When you heard what he sent back, what did you think? <clears throat> well, I, I, knew, I knew right away that it was really good. Yeah. Like, I, like in fact, I, I listened to it, and then I remember I, I left and went and got a coffee, and then I came back and I listened to it again, yeah. and I was like, and it was maybe even better than what I had thought. And then I remember calling Stone and said, "And I said, do you need to come over here right now and listen to this?" And I, you know, not not to say that I knew it was going to produce a band that was going to be around for three or four years or yeah. anything, but I knew it was like there was something really exciting about his interpretation of the music that we sent him. I, I just thought that was fascinating, and it was. And it was dark, and it was he you know it was like fictional, and there you know there was all the elements going on to me like th th that. You knew that there was going to be a lot of different ways that the music could go once we actually mm -hmm. spent time together. Mm -hmm. Which was how much? So much what, what's that? Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, is that you're lucky you passed the audition? <laughs> well, yeah, your whole life down to. You know, three songs. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Yeah. I mean, thanks for it is taking so the time. It is so funny how <laughs> one moment changes everything. Yeah. They said, could you come up to uh, Seattle? And I, and I thought, well, I, I would need 
you know, for a week or five, six days, and I and I had some vacation time coming. Yeah. And then I thought I would drive up, and then they said, no, we could fly you, and I thought, oh, wow. <laughs> but we and, had to wait two weeks so we could get the cheaper price. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably true. No, I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> but that was a that was a productive week, and yeah. and I think yeah. I wrote three more songs before that, and then so then we had like six, and then we on. Um, and then you actually you week. actually did a show at the end of that week, right? We recorded. We recorded all ten, eleven songs yeah. and played a show. Yeah. It's, it's wild. That that turned out to be ten. You know, it was interesting. I, I think I've told the story before, but we we played. We were the surprise. It was like we were just gonna. We got thrown on the bills like an opening act, right? Yeah. And so if you're playing first, you sound check last, and of course everything's running a little late. And I remember, I think the song was released or even well, it was one of the first record songs, and I remember this empty little club mm -hmm. called The Off-Ramp, and, and I remember closing my eyes and singing. Maybe it was released, because it was something I was really focused on, and and closed my eyes, and when I opened my eyes, it was like, every, they had opened the doors, and it was like a, a full crowd. It was, it was the strangest thing, mm -hmm. but was very analogous of, <laughs> of that yeah. whole experience. And what was I happening, think. yeah. You were, you were still called Mookie Blaylock then, right? We didn't even have a name at that point. You didn't? No, it was probably like formerly of, <laughs> of, of this. other bands. Yes. You know? <laughs> how, long, how long were you called Mookie Blaylock for? Just that little West Coast run. Just right? as, uh, for however amount of time it was before he found out. <laughs> <laughs> Did he find out? You know, there was a, we, we, we were, uh, We'd, we'd have base basketball cards laying around. We'd yeah. kind of collect these and we'd put them in the rehearsal place. Or, yeah. And um, <laughs> but they fit perfectly in a cassette tape. Yeah. So our first copies of that first recording, Jeff and I had Mookie Blaylock in our cassette tapes and then it just ended up. And, and I remember that tape sitting on Kelly's office and he was like, you guys gotta have a name in the next 24 hours. And we were just going like, this is important, like we can't. And I remember, I remember thinking. And I'd like, written all these songs. It was like, I'm tapped. <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember like, we need to pick a name that we're definitely gonna replace. Yeah. I remember thinking that. Yeah. Oh, good. I remember thinking like, okay, we're gonna get sued by this guy within a month, so we can pick that name. And was his middle name Duran O'Shea or is that? I think I, that was his real name, yeah. Duran O'Shea, yeah. So that was our other option. <laughs> So did but we did end up naming the record 10 after his number. After him, yeah. Did you decide to replace it, or did the label tell you to replace it, or? The name? Yeah. Oh, no, we, that was all us. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 